What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel and in this video we're going to be talking about three growth stocks that I believe have a lot of upside potential for 2022. I am actually currently invested in the first two stocks that we're going to be talking about. We'll talk about my main reasons on why I'm invested in them and why I'm not invested in the third one. But everybody, before I go any further in this video, I if you enjoy it, you make sure to give the video a thumbs up, you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos, and you check out the free Discord server using the link in the description or the pinned comment down below. It's about to become an invite-only Discord server, so make sure to join while you have the chance because everybody who gets a spot in there right now has a huge surprise coming very soon. I'm sure you're going to love it, so let's get into the rest of this video. Now, the first stock we're going to be talking about is Upwork, ticker UPWK. This stock right now is currently very, very downtrending. And just a little spoiler, all three of the stocks we're going to be talking about are downtrending for the past year. However, historical performance does not equal future performance. We'll go over why I believe these. Now, the biggest risk when it comes to investing in a growth stock in the current economy we're seeing right now is the Fed raising interest rates. And because they raise those interest rates, it's going to be harder for these growth stocks to actually grow. So I don't think that we'll expect to see growth like this in the next few years. The stock going from $5 a share, nearly a penny stock, to 56 in a single year. Now, it's not impossible, but I just don't think that we're going to see gains like that. And we're going to be in that much of a bull market for the next few years as interest rates have risen. But... When you invest in good companies, that is the main thing. And what I believe we're doing with these three potential stocks, if you buy in, is that they're great companies. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. Let's go ahead and talk about what Upwork is and who this company is. So if you go look at Upwork, they are a website that connects freelancers with businesses and entrepreneurs, people who need work. And 250 Fortune 500 companies are using Upwork to get work done for their companies. So let's say, for example, you need, like Microsoft uses them, Airbnb. If you needed a logo design or you needed somebody to do some front-end development for your website or something like that, what you would do is you would go to Upwork and you would just search for it and you would go pay somebody by the hour. Maybe you pay them $20 an hour. Maybe you pay them $100 an hour. They have a bunch of different freelancers out there who offer their services and get paid by the hour to get their work done. And this is a massive market opportunity. Now, on Yahoo Finance, we can look at different metrics. They have a $3.7 billion market cap, a really high beta of $1.86, and a one-year target estimate of $57.11. Now, it's great to look at price targets because it gives you that sentiment, but please do not go out buying and selling stocks simply based because they have a good price target. Now, if we go look at some statistics on the company, their revenue is $472 million in the past year with quarterly revenue growth year over year of 32%. That's really solid. And I know it might say right here, well, they're not profitable yet. And they technically are not profitable yet, but they are on the verge of profitability. We'll look into that later in the video. But their gross profit compared to how much revenue they make is still really solid. That's like more than 50% margin. It's like 55, 60% margins. Just doing the math off the top of my head, which is really, really good. And they have total cash right now to total debt. 696 million in cash to 584 million in debt. So they're in a good financial position and their free cash flow is sitting pretty solid. At least it's not negative. Negative free cash flow is never a good thing. Now, if we go look at their income statement, revenues increasing year over year, really, really solid things. Net income, however, is increasing. So that's not the best thing to see, but with risk can come high reward. And that's kind of what we're gambling on with this company. Assets, liabilities, really solid ratios, and their cash flow. Looking at these, cash flow is starting to not become negative and becoming more and more positive. Very, very solid stuff. Now, analyst expectations, we're going from $0.05 cents per share in earnings to $0.21 cents per share in the next year, which is really solid stuff. Sales growth estimates is 24.8% to $621 million dollars. The overall recommendation is a pretty strong buy at 1.7, which is really solid stuff. Now, if we go to some more price targets, we have 87% upside, nine buys, and one hold on Upwork. Really, really solid. Now, if we go to the institutional activity, 
The total inflow to the outflow is incredible. $1.77 billion worth of Upwork stock being bought compared to only $812 million being sold. I really like to see that type of stuff and especially with the economical conditions that we're seeing right now. If institutions are buying in, they have very, very strong conviction. Now let's go ahead and actually get some raw data. So if we go and look at their investor presentation, this is the Upwork opportunity, a $1.3 trillion opportunity that they're taking. And as we saw earlier, the company has a market cap right now of $3.73 billion, which is really, really solid stuff. So that's a really big opportunity that they definitely can catch market share in. So how do they plan to get this? Well, they plan on doing it by taking all of the best from the platform first service model and taking the best from the traditional Savvis staffing service model and making it into their own hybrid company model with a bunch of great things going for them. Now, if we look at their financial highlights, what we'll see is that the revenues are increasing, the EBITDA is increasing, the gross services volume is increasing year over year, client growth increasing, really like to see that, and the amount of money they're making per client is increasing. Really solid stuff. Now, Morningstar gives this company a fair value of $39, saying Upwork is at a 25% discount right now. Really solid upside potential on this stock. I currently do own this one. Now let's get into stock number two, which is going to be NEO. I'm sure you've heard of NEO. There is a lot of controversy. I would say the only two biggest risks right here are one, the economy and interest rates rising, causing growth stocks and just the entire growth stock market to be hit a little bit. And two, NEO is a Chinese company and there's been a lot of talks about Chinese deal D-lists and different things like that. But NEO is a $53.68 billion company. Now, what we'll look at right here is they trade for $31. They have a one-year target estimate of $58. Yahoo Finance says that they have a $49 billion market cap. But if we go on to some different statistics about this company, what we'll see is that they made $32.8 billion in revenue. Now, this is in Chinese yuan. I think that's the right currency, yen. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we have quarterly revenue growth of 116%. So this is not US dollars. A US dollar revenue, I'm not exactly sure what the currency is, but I think it's like a eight billion, something like that. Total total cash is eighty forty three point three seven billion dollars, which is really good compared to the total debt of nineteen point two billion. Really like to see that they're in a good financial situation. Their levered free cash flow is one point two eight billion dollars. Now these are in different currencies, these are not in US dollars. But it still gives you that overall understanding of where the company is. So NEO, this company sells electric vehicles. They're just like Tesla. But what they have that I really like that gives them a moat on top of other companies is the battery swapping station. And so one of the biggest problems that when it comes to being a electric vehicle owner is having to wait the long charge times. So what NEO has is they have these battery swap stations. And what you do with these battery swap stations is you literally pull up and it's like a gas station. And they will automatically take your battery out and put a new battery, and it works just like that. And it takes only three minutes. Really solid stuff for this company. Upside potential is definitely, definitely there. Now, if we go ahead and look at some fourth quarter and full year 2021 delivery updates, vehicle deliveries up 49% year over year. Quarterly up 44% year over year. Huge, huge stuff. That was just December of 2021. Then the entire quarter was up 44%. They delivered in 2021, 91,429 vehicles, increased by 109% year over year. Huge, huge things that this company is doing right now. Financial results, we'll just see, look at these deliveries. The delivery increases that they're making are massive, huge, huge things coming for this company. Now, looking at their revenues, what we'll see is that for the entire quarter of their second quarter, they made in US dollars right here, the third quarter, sorry, I just had a complete stutter right there. The third quarter, they made about $1.5 billion. This is all in their Chinese currency in RMB. So what we'll see is that everything else though, this section right here is in US dollars. Total revenue was 1.5 billion. Now their loss was $129 million. So they are losing losing less and less in money, which is a very solid thing to see. Always want to see a company losing less and less money because that does give NEO the verge to profitability. 
Now, if we go ahead and look at their income statement just for a better view, you can just see revenues are increasing incredibly. Net income, it's kind of all over the place, but it, as you'll see, the total trend is that this net income is decreasing, technically increasing, I guess you could say, and we're getting to the verge of becoming a profitable company. Let's look at the cash flow real quick. Seeing that, the free cash flow is negative right now, and that's not a good thing to see, so that does kind of raise, raise a question in my mind. But looking onto the analysis, what we'll see is that the analysts are expecting some pretty good things. Sales growth estimate, 74% for the next year. And earnings estimate, going from negative 78 per share to negative 23 per share. Nice margins that this company is seeing. Just looking at Neo Stock News, the overall sentiment is that this is a really good stock. Another Wall Street analyst thinks so. Why Neo Stock is higher today. Neo, all these different companies, the call is to buy these stocks all. So a lot of people are liking this stock. Really good things to see. And they're only worth $53 billion, so there is some upside potential definitely there. The price target is up, so upside of 90%, nine buys, one hold. Now, this is the only thing, another big thing to keep in mind is as there's a lot of Chinese restrictions on US listed stocks, we can see that there's inflow of 5.89 billion to outflow of 9.43 billion. So institutions, investment banks are selling their NEO stock. And another reason that they could have been selling is just because of the simple fact that this stock was up a lot used to be 50 62 dollars a share and then they don't it was at 42 and then they see a bunch of different things happening in the economy and they might just think it's better to sell right now and put their money elsewhere but i do believe in this company for the long term and i'm willing to hold for years and years i think there's a ton of upside potential now let's go ahead and look at their fair value fair value says neo's at an 18 percent discount giving it a 38 dollar fair value which is really really solid stuff now let's go ahead and talk about stock number three, which is Fiverr, the only stock on this list that I'm currently not invested in. They are very similar to Upwork. They're like key competitors. They have a market cap of $3.34 billion, but the stock over the past year is down 63%. They used to be $323 per share. Now this stock is very volatile because they are relatively a lower float company, but they are high share price. This is a company that could really issue some stock splits and get the stock price cheaper with a higher float. That's just my personal opinion, but let's go ahead and talk about some different things. They have a one-year target estimate of $194, a beta of 1.66, and if we go into some key statistics, what we'll see is that they make $273 million in revenue with gross profit about $156 million and quarterly revenue growth of 42%. Cash to debt, solid, so they're in a good financial standing. And the levered free cash flow growing and up to $45 million. Now, the short percent of the float is 13%, so that's not that good. That does raise a question like, why are 13% of people short on this company? Not really solid stuff. But Fiverr is very similar to Upwork. The difference between the main difference between Fiverr and Upwork is that Fiverr is where you go if you need a one time gig. Maybe you just need a logo for an Instagram page. Maybe you just need a logo for whatever it might be. You just pay them one time pretty much, and then you both part ways. But with Upwork, those are more of like commitments, and they do have one-time gigs as well. But Upwork is seen mainly for catching and getting clients that you're going to work more long-term for. So I do believe that there's upside potential to invest in both these companies. And the income statement on Fiverr, Look at this revenue growth. That's really solid numbers. Really, really love to see this type of stuff. Now, if we go to their balance sheet real quick, balance sheet, solid, more assets and liabilities. Quick look at that. And the cash flow, let's go ahead and see how the cash flow is doing. Free cash flow, really, really solid stuff. Love to see it. Analyst expectations, this is another reason. Earnings not expected to increase, so that does raise a question in my mind. And then sales growth, though, is expected to grow by 26%. The overall trend is a buy, 2.2 rating, so really like to see that. Tip ranks, 73% upside, two are saying to buy, four are saying to hold. Now, market beat, the total institutional inflow to outflow is astronomical. That's a lot of money being bought compared to money being sold. But the main reason why I'm not invested in this company is because I think Upwork is going to perform better and the volatility on Fiverr and different things like that. 
I just think Upwork is a better investment in my personal opinion. And that's why I am, I am invested in Upwork and not Fiverr. Now, if we go look at Morningstar, what we'll see is that Fiverr is at a 42% discount. That's a really big discount, giving it a fair value of $159 per share. Looking at some different financial highlights of this company, revenue, everything is increasing. I don't want to waste your time reading all these things, but you can see increase of 33%. We can see right here, increase of 20%. So a lot of good things looking very solid for this company. Looking at their company presentation, a large market opportunity. Here is something that stood out to me that's pretty big, is this is the only majority of freelancing that is still happening online. So there's a massive opportunity for both Fiverr and both Upwork as well. And they're not an online staffing company, which I guess you could say Upwork does have a staffing sort of type of vibe, but Fiverr is more of a come and go. You buy a gig and then you get going. It's only a one-time thing, but Upwork has both the come and go and both the stay and get long-term customer relations. Now we have their value to buyer and sellers. You can just see they do provide a lot of value. So you want to have a company that provides value because as value comes into play, so does the stock price and it should increase as well. And this is really solid stuff I like to see on the company. But everybody, that is what I have for you in this video. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You turn on those post notifications for all future videos. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Leave a comment below. Make sure to join the Discord server before it gets filled up with all those limited spots. Again, thank you so much, and I will see you at the next video.